Hey everyone, in this episode, we're going to talk to Jamie Cosley, a cartoonist and a fabulous artist of all kinds. Welcome to the episode, Jamie. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I appreciate you inviting me. Hi, Jamie. Hey. <laughs> um, I think what we'd like to start off asking you is how, what, what did you start with in your art career? What kind of styles was it? What did you work on? Okay. In the very beginning. The very beginning. <laughs> A long, long ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, well, if we go way, way back, I started um, making my own um, mini comics. Um, you know, long, long before the internet, um, people would uh, use Xerox machines and make their own make their own comics and then you trade them with people all over and um, go to uh, small press conventions. And, um, and you know, in the beginning there was like a whole group of us and then slowly but surely, you know, one guy would get hired to, uh, to write for Simpsons and, and this gal over here, she'd get to draw for Superman and, and then, it's like, I was just sitting there going, well, I want, I want something. <laughs> but, uh, but that's definitely, that's definitely how it started doing, doing many comics and mailing them back and forth to each other, trading at shows. And um, um, yeah, just once you start doing them, they're like, okay, you're a cartoonist now, come on into the group. So you've, you've had a bit of a, a finger in, in publishing and small press for a long time. So you must know a little bit about it. <laughs> I know a little bit. I know enough to. Uh, I know enough to be dangerous. Um, oh, that's all you need to know. <laughs> what was your first published work? My first published work in. Uh, I'm dating. I'm dating myself now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 1995. I had a, a 24 page comic book published called Tony Pony. <laughs> it, was a, it was a black and white um, and it was all about this this character you know he was uh, he was supposed to be my Mickey Mouse or my Woody Woodpecker or something like that um, and he goes to a comic convention and so a, a buddy of mine uh, paid to have him printed I can't even remember how many we how many we did it was probably like two or 300 copies. And, um, and that's kind of what started me. And then once, once you get that, once you get that bug, once you see um, your work in print, even if you did it yourself, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just something that you just, I don't know, you can't, you can't escape. You just, you just keep, you just keep in the game, I guess. <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you think of it? I mean, since 1995, of course, things have changed in publishing. What do you think are the biggest differences? Do you, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's definitely a lot um, easier to get noticed um, because you can, you know, I think the, the best example I have, um, back when I was really, really uh, hungry and, and looking for anything, I used to go on to Twitter and you could search like looking for a cartoonist, looking for an illustrator. And I would try to respond to people like as quickly as I could. And there was, there was one morning, there was a company in, I wanna say Berlin and they were looking for just a, a one page comic strip, kind of topical humor I'm sorry, I forget what it, <laughs> what it was even about. Um, but I remember I responded that morning and that afternoon I had a contract and it was a, it was a couple hundred dollars. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so, this is so cool. And, um, you know, then I started, you know, doing that a lot. I'd look for, and, and you, you've got to be careful too, because there's, you'll run into a lot of people that say, oh, I have an idea for a children's book. And then, uh, Unfortunately, some people want you to do, do everything and you have to explain, well, this is, 
you know, how I make my living. Um, but I have, I have found that, uh, that you can, you can really connect with people almost instantly. And, um, whereas, you know, back in the day, you'd have to put together like several samples, mail it, and then wait, and you might call, but then if you call, they get annoyed that you called. <laughs> but, it's like when I was back, first back at college, if you wanted to get in touch with an agent, you couldn't just email your stuff. You had to spend a fortune getting glossy prints and send them all off, and you never got them back. And for a struggling artist, when they're just starting out, it's a lot, it's a lot of layout to get nothing back, isn't it? It is. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking you know, when, when you start out and I try to, um, you know, run into, especially younger folks, I try to encourage them, you know, it's, it's, um, you, you can definitely get your heart broken pretty quickly. Um, I, I can remember the first, um, the first really, really, really bad review one of my books got. And I was just like, oh, I hope nobody goes to this website because it was just brutal. Um, wow. But you know, the next day the sun, the sun came up and eventually people forgot about it. So I just kept going. And um, yeah, there's, there, there's a lot of things that, um, you know, it's I think one of the like, hardest things to learn. I think it's to learn uh, how to kind of take the criticism and there's going to be a lot of criticism, especially in the beginning, but to take the criticism and, you know, look at it and then put it aside and, and, Go on, focus on, good. focus on the good things because there's always people who think it's great. I mean, even when you think about the greatest things that have ever been created, there's still people whinging about it, isn't there? I mean, yep. That's <laughs> let true. them get on with it. And you know, <laughs> sometimes you can even take away, even when people are, are, are being mean or they're trying to get people to, you know, come to their website and kind of kind of laugh at things, sometimes you can, you can take away something, something really good from it. I know I went to a convention years ago and I had my portfolio and, um, and my wife, Christy was with me and the guy was, you know, and he was, he was fine. He wasn't really being mean or anything, but he was critiquing it. And, um, and this was probably the first time she had actually seen somebody talk about my work. And she, and she was getting a little mad. <laughs> because she, she leaned forward she goes what do you do and I was like oh, it's okay honey he's he's helping me he really is well, that's, uh... <laughs> yeah, she was looking out for me <laughs> that's awesome as she should um the so... kind of, the, I'm sorry the kind of the kind of books that you put out that you were publishing at least at least then were they like just not I don't mean just but were they illustrated books were they uh comics um what kind of art books were they yeah they were they were comic books okay and, okay I and, wasn't sure uh, it was you know very cartoony and back then I had a very very um uh it was an, an intentional punk rock aesthetic um I just I had you know sharpie markers and so you know, you, you'd look at it, and I, I remember there was um, there was a guy. Do you guys know uh, Jay Stevens? Um, he did uh, Jet Cat, and he did uh, Tuttenstein, and Secret Saturdays was on Cartoon Network um, not too long ago. It might be because I'm in the UK. I, I don't, I wouldn't get everything that you guys get. Right, right. Well, he's he's pretty. Uh, he was pretty well known. Um, back in the day, especially because he had some cartoons on Nickelodeon, and and um, it was just one of those things. And he was very, he was very brutal, but it it, it helped me because he he said he looked at some of these, and he said, I you know I get you're like use whatever tools you have. He said, but you have some very strong character designs that are that are choking under these these sharpies he said try try a brush just try it you might like it and um and so I switched and I I don't use the you know traditional brush but I use a brush pen and you can get that really that really pretty uh 
thin to thick line that gives it so much depth. And, and it, it really was, um, and that's not to say, you know, don't use Sharpies. I think you use, cause I've seen some people use Sharpies and it's like, how did you do that? But for me changing, it, it was definitely a period of growth, personal growth. Cause I can say, okay, you know, you, you were right. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of what brand of uh, brush marker do you use i use a uh, a pentel pocket brush pen and it's one that you can um uh you basically take off the bottom and you replace the cartridges and i go i mean i go through a lot of cartridges i think they come like six to a pack and um and i just i just found that that's easier for me than, you know, I have some friends and they have the traditional, you know, Windsor Newton and specific ink. And I'm like, ah, you know, I still, mm -hmm. I still like, <laughs> I still like that feel of, um, you know, holding a pen. That's just what I prefer. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the difference between uh, an actual pencil and well, an Apple pencil, you know, or one of the, for these, these iPads and stuff. And I, I've just gotten an iPad that I'm learning to use and I'm beginning to understand the difference between using the, well, like you're talking about with the, uh, the pen tells and then an actual pen or brush and that they have, they all have their points, but it is, uh, it's different. It's very different. It is. It is and it's so do you, color, do you color your work traditionally? Um, I do definitely for commissions. Um, I just recently did a couple of uh, pet portraits and, um, and those, I, I, th I think it's funny because actually the stuff that I've been learning in Photoshop has, has helped me with the, with the traditional, you know, whether it's watercolors or acrylic or markers or whatever, um, you know, the, the toughest part is is the patience, the the, the setting down the layers and, and coming back to it. Because as a as a cartoonist, I work very quickly and and I can draw really quick, but I have not figured out how to color really quick. <laughs> yeah, it just it just takes hours. I don't care if it's it's in the computer or if it's traditional. It just takes so long. Um, so I'm always looking out if, if, if you There's talk a little, to I don't know if you've tried this before, but am I, um, I'm freezing up, aren't I? Can you hear me now? I can hear I you, but yeah. Yeah. Um, on Photoshop, the little trick I use, um, if you set your layer to multiply, um, well, duplicate your layer, set that duplicate layer to multiply, and you can just color straight over the top and it'll keep all your line work. I don't know if you've ever tried that. It's just, it's just the quickest way I've found to do it. Okay. So like <laughs> when you're, you're talking about like when you're doing your, your flats or you're trying to decide like, you know, these are the combinations I'm going to use. And so that way you can go out of lines or what do you, I just want to make sure I understand. It'll keep, it'll keep all your line work. Do what you want over okay. the top of it. Okay, so multiply. I mean, give, give that, that things up. <laughs> okay. I think you can also use masks. I haven't quite mastered that because I don't use color in Photoshop a lot, but uh, for a couple of things I had to do for uh, for horse illustrations, when you you can you can also select this the size the not the size the area that you need to work in and then you can kind of like make a new layer and you can you can drop color in there as much as you want and it will stay within that little area mask is apparently another really time-saving thing that i suppose we should all learn if we're going to be doing that kind of thing i don't know that's awesome yeah i, I would i would love to see some um some, some tutorials because i know even um like my brother, he is a um, professional, it, it's called digital compositor. So he, um, he's worked for video game companies and, and movie studios. And when you see his, um, his Photoshop and his layers, it's like, oh my gosh, it's just page after page, like 
you know, the character's nose. And then there's one for the highlighted nose. And he looks at mine and everything's flat. <laughs> He's like, how do you keep up with everything? I was like, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> All of his are all linked together properly and he knows exactly what's going on and yeah he's i mean he's got properly yeah he know he know he knows what he's doing and uh, that's why he's coloring uh and <laughs> we'll talk about that later but yeah he's he's coloring my comic so and it's just awesome it's, yeah it saved me a ton so what i did notice is that you've done some children's books was that before you started with um, Star Wars Insider? Yes. Um, right around, I guess it was 2008, um, I lost uh, a, a really good job in sales. And um, this was right at the time that my daughter was born. Uh, great, great timing. <laughs> um, and so I, I said, well, I think I'm going to give this art thing a go again. And of course, my wife was like, oh, gosh, you know, <laughs> she knows what that what that meant. Um, but again, back to the um, searching on on like Twitter and Facebook. And so the first couple of things I did was, you know, just someone who had a dream and I've always wanted to be an author and I'm going to self-publish. But then those things led to, you know, working with an actual publisher. And, um, and so, yeah, all those things proceeded, you know, working in, with Tops and working with Star Wars Insider. So, um, and a lot, of the, a lot of the books I did were, they were all in the, the format of um, like eight by eight, like the old Berenstain Bear books. Oh, um, I love those. Yeah. I, I love the way they used to do hands. I was fascinated with that as a kid. You know, the little claws. Yes. <laughs> I love that. And I think that's one of those things that, you know, if you, if you talk to other artists, you know, they probably all have at least one Berenstain Bears book or Richard Scarry or, you know, there's, there's certain things that we all, we all gravitate towards and it's, you know, it's the beauty of, of, of what we do. But yeah, all that was before Tops and before Star Wars Insider. How did you get uh, into the Star Wars Insider? Was that just a happenstance or? Yeah, I, I think it was. I think it was a blessing. <laughs> um, I had, uh, I sent an email to the editor and at that time it was um, Jonathan Wilkins. And uh, I had, I mean, I hadn't been working at Tops very long either, but you know how you, you know, once you get something, you're just like, oh man, I can do anything now. You know, you just, you just have that. <laughs> I can take on the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I sent him an, an email and I said, I said, do you ever hire people to, um, you know, do spot illustrations or, um, you know, maybe you'd be interested in a comic strip. And uh, honestly, I never, I never thought I would hear back. Um, but it was like the next day, uh, he said, uh, we're actually in the process of, of reformatting and um, a comic strip would be really cool. Send me what you, what you have. And of course, at the time, I didn't have anything because I didn't think he was going to respond. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was working on a book. And I remember I took, I took the entire day and um, I just wrote gags, just, you know, working on, you know, you know, things with, with Jabba and Darth Vader and all this stuff. And I did a bunch of, a bunch of samples and I sent them and we had talked off and on for, it was actually months. And he kept saying he was, he was very, very cool but he kept saying i can't make any promises you, you just you just don't know ultimately it's lucas lucas film's decision so even though i thought i had something that was funny um i was kind of preparing for you know it didn't work out so after a few months i contacted him in january i think it was and um i said hey did did you ever get any feedback 
from Lucasfilm, you know, thinking maybe I could, you know, just take some of that and keep going. He said, oh yeah, your first one appears in the April issue and I'm going to need some more. <laughs> what and I was like, what? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> and uh, so that was January. So that April, I, um, I drove to Florida to go to Star Wars Celebration. And I actually sat with Star Wars Insider Magazine. Of course, nobody knew who I was because it, it had just come out like that month. Um, but to me, it was the coolest, the coolest thing ever. And um, oh, it must have been amazing. I bet you were just like, I was. I was. I was. I was. Out for months. <laughs> and I was, um, you know, I would just get on my kids' nerves so bad because. <laughs> They'd look over at me and, and I'd just be smiling and they go, what? I'm like, I'm drawing for Star Wars Insider. <laughs> oh my God. And they're like, so Dad. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, Dad, please. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was, and that's, you know, at this April will be five years. And wow, um, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a tr tremendous blessing. Uh, uh, I feel like, um, you know, I, I will forever be grateful to, uh, to Jonathan for giving for giving me the, the chance and um it's just neat I get excited every time I get you know I it comes in the mail and, and then I'll go to the I'll go to the newsstand and buy it <laughs> so have you always leaned more towards humor comics than um say your graphic serious graphic novels definitely definitely um and I and I think you know, when earlier when we were talking about the patients, I think that's why I lean towards a uh, single panel because, you know, like, you know, the far side, which actually the, I didn't name the comic strip, the light side, that was Jonathan. Cause he was a, a huge fan of the far side. I used oh, to read that. Brilliant. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I think I had a couple of name suggestions, but they weren't very good. So I'm glad he, um, <laughs> I'm glad he, he got to pick it. But, um, but yeah, just being able to sit down and, you know, in an entire day or, or two days, you can pencil, ink, color, letter, send it off, and then you can relax for a couple of weeks until you got to do it again. Whereas graphic novels, especially, I mean, I'm into, I guess, a year and a half now on the graphic novel, and it's, I, I just have to, I have to fake myself out. I'm like, okay, this week I have to get two pages done. And that's not overwhelming. Just get those two pages done. And, um, and then, you know, over time that builds up because if I look at it and I'm like, I've got to do 150 pages, I start, you know, my chest hurts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's, yeah. Too, it's too much. Yeah. Um, so you, this is what you're working on now. This is um, Blue Scar the Barbarian, is it? Yep. Is that what you're working on right now? Yep. We have um, uh, we have thirty, I think thirty five patrons, and um, um. <laughs> and uh, I I I love each and every one, and um, so because we we got that, I was like, okay. It, it's only this much a month, but it's still something. And so I've, I've got to get this done. And so we started doing, um, I think it was a year and a half ago. And I'm up to, I think, 105 pages now. Wow. Good on you. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's been <laughs> tremendous. My, my, son is, my son is the one who writes the stories. And Tyler is very, very like he's he's like dad this is the beginning the middle and the end and you know he always laughs at me because i want to reveal everything at once and you better uh, let your son take care of that he obviously knows what he's doing <laughs> yeah. he's he's got a better he's got a better handle on it or or sometimes like we i have this one scene where there's a there's a bounty hunter and his name is jeremiah thunder muffin <laughs> and he's he's this uh 
he's this lion and he's, he's got this really big mane and he's huge and he's got these guns. And there's this one scene and I didn't tell Tyler I was gonna do it because I knew he would, he would say no, but he, um, uh, Blue, Blue Scar gets power from this sword. And so <laughs> Jeremiah sees this and he, obviously this is a, a, a tribute to Thundercats, but he goes, Thunder Muffin, Thunder Muffin, Thunder Muffin. And then these little lions pop out of his mane <laughs> and they start attacking Blue Scar. And Blue Scar's like, what in the world is this? And so I posted it and my son was like, immediately, what, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He's like, he's like, we didn't talk about this, dad. I'm like, <laughs> I just thought it was funny, you know? And he's like, oh my gosh, please run these things by me. So he's very professional. Um, and and my, my brother, my brother, Stephen does all of the coloring now. He started in issue uh, three. So we're about, issue three was, I think 42 pages and he's halfway, he's halfway there. Um, so this is a family, uh, family book actually. It is. It, it's um oh, you know, amazing to have a family creation that's that's brilliant well it's it's uh, you know my my brother he got into he got into working at um uh blue blue sky because they they did the um ice age movies oh so he, yeah so he went working with them right out of college and um when I was in my thirties, I had almost gotten to a point where I was like, I just, I don't think I can do it anymore. It's just too, it's just too much, it, you know? And I was thinking about calling it quits and um, it, it upset him so bad. He called, he called our mom <laughs> and then she came, she called me and, and I went over to the house and she's, she's like, sit down. She said, we're going to pray together and don't you worry about it. And cause he was just like, you can't cause, and he would always say, you're the, you're the reason I'm doing what I'm doing. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's so neat. Cause you know, he's my younger brother, but he's, I mean, he's like my hero for the, for the things that he's, <laughs> so he's been able to your family seems to be quite creative. Uh, you and you, you, if I remember right, uh, back at the beginning, you said you had a job in sales and that kind of didn't last. So you've been in, you've been like, you've been making a living out of, uh, off of artwork and creating books and all this stuff. Could you ever give that up and go back to a quote unquote regular life now? No. <laughs> No, I would be so miserable. Um, I just, you know, I, I love it so much. I love being, um, I love being creative. I love, and, and this is right at the, right at the beginning of this year, I actually had a, um, you know, it was a, it was a bit, of, bit of a downer because I, I had been doing this weekly comic strip called Hutch for this, um, this magazine called Workplaces. And it was ridiculous what they were, um, you know, what, what they were, the, the freedoms that I had and, and what they were paying me. And so for five years, I mean, it was just tremendous. And then because of COVID and, um, you know, restrictions and all this stuff and how it affected their advertising, I got dropped at the beginning of the year. So, so right away, I was starting out in January and I was like, that's, that was, that was my house payment every, every month. I mean, that was, that was huge. So, um, you know, you're always going to have those moments where you freak out and you, you have self doubt and you're like, am I doing the right thing? I was um, just going to ask you, how do you manage, how do you manage the self doubt and the, the, there's always a little bit of fear in the back. You know, you're having a wonderful time. You love this life and that's the job for you. But there's always that, uh, oh my God, can I make the next month payment type of thing? How do you deal with, with being able to say no to some jobs? Because I mean, you can't do everything. Right. It's, 
it's a hard balance. It really is. And um, I think what has helped, uh, you know, for me is, is having, you know, having a family that I'm very, very uh, supportive. Yeah, they're very supportive. We, we just have a strong connection. My brother, my, my son and, and, and my wife, you know, she's, you know, she's very, she's like, well, let's, let's look at, let's look at all this. But, you know, we were, I was just having one of those moments. I'm like, you know, I'm so, I, w I wanted to draw Hutch forever. I wanted, I wanted that comic strip to be, and as silly as it sounds, you know, I told her, I said, I miss the characters already because, you know, we commune together every week. I knew that I had that deadline and now they're gone. And, um, and she, she just has a great, she was like, but look at what you were able to do in five years with, you know, a comic strip that you created and um, just very encouraging. And she said, and you're going to, there, there will be something else. And so when you, when you look at it that way, it's like, all right, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just keep my head up and, and keep working and keep putting myself out there. And, um, you know, and I've had, since January, I've had a lot of commissions, everything from pet portraits to, you know, can you draw, can you draw me as Spider-Man and um, what, whatever. <laughs> Do you still work in sketch cards or have you done very much at all? Well, it, it's funny, I had, um, I had actually quit my last, my last sketch card was, I think Mandalorian 2. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I had just said, you know, I wasn't mean, but I had just said, you know, I, I love when, when I see people do the, you know, these photorealistic, these hyper-realistic, they're just gorgeous. I said, but that's, I don't want to do that. I, I just, I don't. And, um, and so I said, this is what it would look like. And they said, well, we can't, we can't approve, uh, you know, cartoons. And I said, well, then thank you for the time that I've had, but I'm, you know, I don't want to do this. And, and so I didn't for the longest time. And then um, someone from Upper Deck reached out to me and and I don't know a whole lot about working uh, with them, but so far my experience has been good. So <laughs> it, has, it has improved over the past year. Good. good. Yeah, I've been doing so much better now. Yeah. Good, because yeah. because the guy that I talked to was really nice, and and he was like, "I want you to draw it in your style. I I want it to be cartoony. I want it." And I'm like, "You got it. I'm I'm there." And so I've I've done. None of them, none of them have come out yet, but I've done four sets for them. And then I just got invited back to um, Star Wars Finest. Yeah. Which, which was a, a shock. Um, well, I think we have to go through the approval process again. So who knows what's actually going to happen with that. But right. We'll see. Yeah. Who, who knows? But I said, okay, you know, so yeah, I still, I still love doing the sketch cards, but I, I definitely, I don't know, I'm, I'm just adamant about my style and, and because the, the people that I've met that like what I do for Star Wars Insider, they don't want a sketch card that looks like realistic. They yeah. want the cartoony stuff. Yeah. So I just tried to explain that, but what I am learning just just from people that I've met from from friends that I've been able to talk to is that you know Disney is so big and Lucasfilm they're so big sometimes they they really don't know what else is going on in all these other little divisions well you'd think with them being being one of the main producers of animated films back in the day that they'd appreciate some style and something different so it is really sad that we all have to stick to photo realism right yeah that's uh the, of course that's the, those are the studios that tend to put that on the trading card companies who have to then put that on us it's a little bit of a a little bit of a 
house of cards thing but anyway what you're gonna do but like you said, Lindsay, you, you'd think that, that the companies would appreciate more individualistic things. Yeah, but absolutely. I mean, I'm really pleased to hear that Upper Deck um, are taking on styles and being a bit more creative with it. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I've never done a set for Upper Deck. I'd, I'd like to. This It sounds really good nowadays. Yeah. It's I, better. I, it's much better. Yeah, I think you'd be you'd be great. Um, uh, you know, and, well, and it, it's it's I weird. Have to be interested in the, the little cutie things or not, but you know, if they're happy with styles, I'll have to see. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, that's what I want to read. I, I want to read that. You know, we we want you to, and it does. I think it does discourage you know swiping. You know, when you. You oh, take you take an image that somebody's done, and you're like, okay, well, I'm just going to recreate this, and you're like, well, then, what am I doing? <laughs> what do yeah. you think about that? What do you think about that? The swiping and all of that. Uh, I think it happens a little. Well, unless I'm out of the loop, but I think it happens less often now than it used to ten years ago. Um, are you aware of any of that kind of thing going on? I what swiping is it? Is it copying? Yeah. Is that what swiping is? Yep. So, so basically, if if um, if somebody puts out, you know, a, a cover and you really like it and you try to recreate it, um, now one way to do it, of course, is to say, you know, like Jamie after so and so. So you're you're paying respects to to that artist, but especially in comics, um, I mean, you you could you know, dig through the bins and find something from the 60s and kind of, all right, I'm going to take that panel there and I'm going to recreate it for what I'm doing now. And, right, okay. you know, <laughs> and people will go, oh, I, you know, I see what you did there. Um, <laughs> there, are, there are fans that, there are, there are fans out there that have memorized like every single panel for every single comic book that they're really, really into. I mean, we're all a little bit that, like that for the things that we're maniacally fan based on. So, you know, if you try to do that, somebody's going to somebody's going to out you down the road. Yep. <laughs> it's not it a good is. thing to do. That's why you want to if you're going to do it, you want to say you want to pay those respects after McFarlane or after Liefeld or after whoever. Um, and, th and then that's why when you look at the. Um, like I'm sure you guys remember when Tops would have you not only do one card, but you had to do five and they were all the same. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, uh, <laughs> that was depressing. Blood. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, it didn't last very long though, but yeah, you had to do like you were given a certain number of images you could do. You can do those, but they have to be exactly the same. Exactly the same. It's like, oh, yuck. It was not fun to do. It was, it's not, it wasn't fun at all. It, I was so glad that didn't, well, for when I went into it anyways, I'm so glad that it didn't last all that much longer uh, after which, did you have to do that a lot? No, surely no, not. It no. was, it, like you said, it was just a couple of assignments, but I was like, oh, I'm so over this. <laughs> it's yeah. so boring. So, we're you, not robots, are we? We're not, you know, you can't program us just to do this stuff. Right. It gets to you, but, oh, God. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's, it's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm glad they stopped. Do you have any uh, intention of, cre of continuing in sketch cards, or do you think that you're slowly going to move on to other things? I would still, I would still love to do them. Um, in your own style, surely? Yeah, in, in, in my own style. That's that's the thing that I just, you know, it's it's so hard to when you when you feel like you're competing, I guess, for for attention or or for you know someone to notice you, if you're constantly switching up styles, it's it's really hard for people to, I mean, you can. You can look at my stuff and you can go, okay, well, that's, that's Jamie, you know, especially if you, if you're a fan of Star Wars Insider or any of the children's books, um, 
so to constantly now I know some people would argue well you you'll probably get you know more work and if if you can do a bunch of different a bunch of different styles but i just i have just found that i can make more money off of my cartoons than i can trying to recreate uh, a photo which i again i that's not a knock towards anyone i think it's some of the stuff I see, I'm like, oh my gosh, how did you, how did you even do that? <laughs> but it's more fun for you and, and it works out better for you to, for you to be you and for you to draw things and do things your way. Well, that means you, you're getting where you need to go then. Right. When you were, spe when you were speaking earlier about, you know, not drawing your characters anymore and uh, how you get, you get that bond with them, don't you? Because you have to know their personalities to draw what they're doing every week. Right. Like, um, I started a small web comic. Um, it didn't. I didn't do it for very long. It didn't go very far. But I had that connection to the characters because I knew them. I didn't know how to get them across properly. What was in my head, but I knew them. So when when it ended, I was like, mm. you know, you are sad, aren't you? Like, it's like a saying goodbye to some friends definitely exactly but yeah what i've noticed is if you just be yourself and draw how you draw it kind of just starts going the right way doesn't it because it just comes out so naturally yeah yeah and uh, my i think when i see your work <laughs> one of my one of my best friends is um one of my best friends is is art balthazar and he, for, for years, he's been drawing for DC Comics. He created uh, Tiny Titans. And his style, <clears throat> I mean, once, you, once you've seen one of his, you're like, that's art. And it was funny when they, when they called him, they said, I want you to draw it like you draw. They, they had one of his independent comics. And, and ever since then, you know, that's, that's what he's done. And there's, there's just such a joy, you know, when I, when I call and check in on him and see what he's doing, there's, there's, there's this joy um, that you just don't get. And he's another one, by the way, that I would call. And um, I remember one time there was a um, cartoon, y'all know the cartoon Word Girl? I have, I've seen the, the title, but I have not read it or it was, it was on um, uh, public access, I think. And for a time it was kind of, uh, it was kind of popular. And that was one of the things that uh, Boom Studios was publishing the comic book. And so I had posted some samples on one of their message boards and they said, okay, you can try out. And it was down to me and one other person and the other person got it. It was like a, um, it was like a deal it was scholastic and and I was so upset and in art he said um, you know he was always saying no you got to keep going and he sent me a list and I never knew and it was like I wanted to say there was like twelve things that he had tried out for and didn't get and I guess that's you know and, and that that's part of it is is you just got to you've got to keep going because that that one that it only takes that one time for someone to say all right that's absolutely that. right to to be stubborn enough to stick with it and uh, to see through the the insecure times the bad times and the good times because sometimes you get good things happening and then you tend to ride it a little bit and that's never a good thing because actually that brings me to my next question. You have multiple uh, venues that you put your art into. Sketch cards is a relatively small thing, I think, but you're also publishing, you publishing the, for uh, Star Wars Insider and you're putting together the book. So you've got those, at least those things right there. What else are you working on? Or are you uh, focusing just on those? I still, I still have, uh... Uh, picture books that I do um, from from time to time. I have repeat authors. Um, and so I'll have, you know, projects like that and then commissions. And it works really well for me because 
I have ADHD, so attention deficit hyper disorder. Um, so it's like trying to stay focused is, is really a struggle. But when you have so many things that you're doing and you just break it down like per day, like, okay, I'm going to do one sketch card. I'm going to do, I'm going to send in the roughs um, for Star Wars Insider, you know, whatever issue we happen to be on. I'm going to do one page for this picture book. And so I've, I have found that having all those things works a lot better um, for me because usually I'll break it down like Fridays is usually Blue Scar. I know, I know on Fridays I'm going to be working on Blue Scar. Um, Mondays I might be returning emails and doing some sketch cards. Well, right now I'm doing sketch cards every day because I, I got <laughs> I got to get rid of them, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do when they arrive until you've done them all <laughs> right. and you have to take a break because it's so working so small i wish they were just a little bit bigger oh. there are bigger sketch cards but they don't fit into the packs <laughs> right <laughs> so um, are you a list person are you a list person oh definitely definitely okay. I, I have to have little things this, this pump so am i so am i yeah <laughs> I have to have like, okay, I, I accomplished this. And sometimes I'll, I will have already done it, but I put it on the list anyway, so I can check it off. Check it off. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I do the same thing. <laughs> Just so you have the satisfaction that yes, I did something today. I did it. It absolutely it makes you feel better when you're ticking them off though. You're like job done. Job yeah. done. Tack on the next one. <laughs> but I think I work in the same way to you, Jamie. I like hot round things. It just makes sure you're always enthusiastic about what you're doing as well. Because right. you can get bored with not saying, oh, this is doing my head in now. <laughs> but if you've got something else to jump to, you can, yeah. Yeah, you have the opportunity to set something aside a little bit and refresh yourself with a different project and then go back to it. Yeah, yeah. And I had a, um, uh, a big commission not too long ago. And it was, uh, I think it was Baby Yoda and uh, this uh, this person's dog and um, yeah. sitting together and of course it's a little it's a little more you know a little more detailed but I I have found that if I again if I just tackle just a little bit each day um, then I can look back and say wow that's you know that that one you know pat myself on the back um, <laughs> and I just you know I, I can't imagine Cause I, I, I know some people that in comics that they're like, I'm going to draw this page from eight in the morning until eight at night. And, you know, usually it's, it's, you know, the, the guys and gals that are on, you know, Marvel or, or DC. And I've, I've always, I've always been able to make friends with a lot of different people. So I know the, the industry and I know what the, what the, what the payments are and I know what's required and some things I'm just like that is not good that's not good for your health that's not good for your that's not good for your emotional state your mental uh health uh, your physical health that's no I don't my age I could never do that no nope. yeah I I see and I'm like I'm like how much do you get do you get paid and that's why I knew you know I I knew that Hutch was a gift from God because that was one single panel and, and the payment was really, really good. And I had it for five years and I'm going to hold on to that forever. Um, but yeah, there, there are people that they recognize what we do. They recognize the, the heart and soul that we put into it and, and they will, they will pay us and, and it might not be, you know, DC, and it might not be Batman. It might be something else that won't have that audience, but it'll still have a small enough audience that they can pay you. That's an excellent point that sometimes you, you have a dream and then you find out what actually maybe might go along with that dream and you realize you, that's kind of heartbreaking to hear what you say, you know, what you have really wanted to do this. And then you found out how many hours they actually work. And, you know, maybe the pay isn't what you had hoped it would be. And 
that doesn't mean that your dream is gone. You just might have to ad adapt it a little bit and, and you know, <laughs> it may dream change a little bit. But that's a very good point. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I still enjoy, um, you know, doing the pet portraits and, and, and you know, sometimes you'll, you'll get requests to do, draw little babies. <laughs> um, as long as, I, as long as I'm drawing, I'm pretty happy, so. So are you, uh, your next book, when is your next book gonna be coming out? How long is, have you been working on it? Oh man, it's been um, definitely all through um, 2020 and 21 when you, know, you, you couldn't go anywhere because you're on lockdown. Um, so, you know, about, about two years and uh, we are getting ready to probably this summer, we'll release the third issue at um, Heroes Con. Uh, Heroes Con is in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and it's a three-day con. And in addition to tabling there, I'll do like a, um, uh, a workshop for little kids, how to draw. It's how to draw Star Wars the way Jamie does. <laughs> um, you know, so. <laughs> they're like, uh, it, it's, it's so cute. I love seeing the little, little kids draw, especially Darth Vader. When I draw Darth Vader, he has googly eyes like Garfield. Um, <laughs> and, and seeing them draw is, is just a highlight. So uh, the third, sorry, sorry, go on. Yeah, the, the, um, so the third issue will come out and then if everything goes well, we, we were going to do a Kickstarter. We were going to do an Indiegogo and all that kind of stuff. But uh, Stephen, Stephen and I, now Stephen's younger than I am, but we've always loved and, and, and played video games. And our parents kept all of the boxes and the manuals that these games came in. So that like so <laughs> yes, yesterday I sold, I had, uh, it was for Nintendo, the old school Nintendo, Bucky O'Hare, 1992. I had the box, I had the game, I had the manual. I sold it yesterday for $675. Holy moly, good on you. <laughs> one, <laughs> one video game. So we've got others and we're just, we're just going to put that aside and be like, this is, there's your business money right there. Yeah. We're going to do our book. We're going to um, hopefully do it uh, hard bounce or really nice, like with a pretty spine and everything. And, and then, um, then we'll tackle distribution, but, uh, but yeah. Where it, first two books be purchased from. Um, oh, you can get them directly from me. Uh, and, um, I have a, um, my website is just jamiecosley.com. And we'll and be sure to, to include all the, all the links to wherever the people can find your books or you will, it'll, they'll be in the show notes. Thank so you. You'll that, send me all that stuff after. Okay. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. We, we've sold for the first issue. We did an orange cover and we only printed 75 copies <laughs> and we sold out. So now we have a blue cover. And then when we, when we sell out of that, we'll do another and we'll just, obviously we do really, really small runs anywhere from 75 to 200. But the goal is to take all the issues and do one big, really, really nice graphic novel. And, um, you know, we don't, we don't know from there. Hope, hopefully somebody will see it and say they want to make a movie or something, but. Um, well, that could, you never know. Never you know. say you never know what all the orange ones are sold out. I want an orange one. <laughs> <laughs> I do love orange anyway. My whole studio is orange, but. Is it really? I can't have one. <laughs> my, um, my studio is orange too. Bright orange. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our well, living room is orange. Research, and apparently it's the most productive color. So I was like, let's go. I'm going to be productive. Let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. 
That's very cool. I wish I, I wish I was in my studio so I could show you guys. Um, I'll I'll do like a, a a live stream at some point and just kind of show. If we're still if we're still going with this in the future, you've also got to come back and talk to us about the third book release and everything, so we can Absolutely. see it. Yes, you have to come back. I'd love to. I'd love to. Well, on that note, um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us that that you haven't gotten to concerning? Um, well, concerning pretty much any of the way the ways you work, uh, your books, anything like that. Sketch cards, your last uh, adieu to sketch cards or something. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think the main thing that I would like to to share is that, um, you know, to normalize this. I mean, I I feel like I know. I feel like I know you because I've seen, I've seen your work and, um, but it's really, it's really nice to sit and talk and, and to, to have someone say, well, I, I go through all of this too. I go through the, the self doubt and, and insecure. And, and there's always going to be somebody that goes, you're insecure. You're like my favorite artist. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is nice to know that other people feel many of the same things that you do. It's kind of, I think, one of the, maybe one of the reasons Lindsay and I are doing this, you know. As creators, we're all in our little rooms or areas or wherever we work. Yep. And I know, speaking for myself, it's like, like, it's so rare that I get to meet other people who work in any kind of job that I do. So it's awfully cool to meet everyone on the uh, online like this to talk and chat and no no I'm, I'm not as weird as I thought I was <laughs> <laughs> it's great. we're all just as weird as we thought we were <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, I just you know I, I think having um, uh, friends that will that will support you and you know love on you when you when you go through those times where you're just like oh I'm just you know, I'm a phony, <laughs> I'm a fraud, oh. I need, you know, I need that real job, and, but, you know, you'd be miserable at that real, because I was a horrible salesperson, I mean, the only time that I can remember where I would really connect with people is, I remember we, you'd have to go through these catalogs, and um, there was one, there was one guy, and I guess, probably unfairly. I thought he was kind of stuffy and um, not interested in working with me. But we're flipping through the catalog and he saw that I had drawn Scooby-Doo off in the margins, right? And <laughs> he goes, did you draw that? I said, yeah. And he goes, I love Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and so <laughs> all of a sudden, this guy's my best bud. And this is not I, I ended up getting that sale. You know, because, and then I thought, you know, everybody likes comics, I think, even if it's not Spider-Man, it could be Garfield, it could be Peanuts, it could be, you know, Dennis the Menace. Um, and, and, and we have those connections with people. Can I yeah. ask, uh, one thing I didn't get to ask earlier, I'm really interested. What was your favorite style when you were a kid? What was the one cartoon that made you, uh, I love this, everything about it. Well, I think, I think for comic strips, you know, as we were talking earlier, I think before we started recording, um, definitely the newspaper comics. And I remember being as young as, you know, four years old and I would try to draw um, the little dog that was in Beetle Bailey. Oh God, yes. Said, <laughs> He wore, he wore the little suit like Sarge and he would kind of boss the guys around. And I thought, I want to learn to draw him. I think his name was Otto. Oh, I, and, I think you're right. I remember <laughs> that dog, yeah. <laughs> so I definitely think Mort Walker, um, obviously the big names, which we all kind of gravitate towards would be Charles Schultz and um, Bill Watterson, Calvin and Hobbes. Um, Do you remember the uh, the the... I can't remember who drew it. It was, I think it was a comic called Prince Valiant and it was like all done in ink. Do, do either of you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. Who drew that? Oh gosh. 
I, I was, I, I collected them. I actually collected all the cartoons in, the, in every weekend's newspaper. I'd take them out, I'd read them and then try to draw all the horses because I was a horse person. And yeah. uh, oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, so this is like bringing memory back. So all those comics, even here in Canada, we had a lot of the same ones you're talking about. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And then, and then in, the, uh, in the UK, you guys had Dennis the Menace and then we had Dennis the Menace. And we had Andy Cap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. He was, <laughs> he's naughty. He's funny, though. <laughs> oh, he goes to the pub and then just passes out on the sofa. <laughs> and his missus is never happy with him. <laughs> and Dagwood? Did you guys have Dagwood, too, then? I have Dagwood, yep. Yeah. Blondie. I remember. Oh, what was his name? The long dog. The. Oh, my God. I've forgotten what his name was. Well, that was really popular. It's just gone. No. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't. I would just, you would have liked it. You like long dogs. Well, what? I'll see if I can find out. What it, oh, no, he was a basset hound. He was a basset hound. I remember now, but I can't oh. remember what it was called. I'd have, okay. to, look I'd have to look it up. I just thought it, I thought it was cool that in, in the UK and in the United States, there were two characters named Dennis the Menace and they came out on the exact same day. And that's why, because I think he was in, was there something called uh, Bino? Yes, Dennis the Menace was in Bino. He was the red and black stripy top with the black curly hair. Yep, yep. He had a cartoon called Dennis, which was a little kid, but with blonde hair. He wasn't as naughty though, he wasn't. He wasn't like Dennis the Menace. Half as fun. <laughs> <laughs> Too well behaved. <laughs> okay, well, now we've gone to down memory lane through comics. That's that's awesome. All those old comics, they bring back such such memories. Uh, it must be great to be in, uh, be in a publication every week that, you know, makes people laugh and puts a smile on the face as well. I love that. Every time I see you in my timeline, Jamie, you always put a smile on my face. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's been absolutely amazing to talking to you. And like we said earlier, you you absolutely have to come back on and, and talk about the, uh, the third book. Oh, definitely. Thank you. I will. Uh, what, what colors it's going to be and all of that. Is there anything else you'd like to ask, Lindsay? I, I think that's everything, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, think, I think I'm appeased now. <laughs> <laughs> it was great to meet you, uh, Jamie. I, I know you're friends with me on Facebook, but I, I will say that lately I'm not on Facebook a whole lot and I'm being really selfish when I'm on Facebook promoting all this stuff. But I'm going to look you up now a little bit more. I want to find out a bit more. Oh, well, thank so, you. Please, please tell everyone where they exactly all the places where they can find you. And then at the end, send me all the written stuff and I'll include it all in the show notes. Where can they okay. find you? The best, the best place is, uh, is just my name, Jamie Cosley, um, dot com. And okay. once you're there, all the links that you need, the, the Patreon, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagram, everything's right there. Um, and obviously I would love, uh, love for anyone that was interested to join the Patreon page. I do, I do an update every Friday and, um, um, I, I have just really enjoyed that, uh, that community of, of folks that have said, we're going to, you know, we're going to support you and Patreon and is amazing. I, uh, it is. I'm a fan of Patreon. Me too. And that's, that's another thing. Um, um, I feel like I keep telling you guys disappointing news, but um, for five weeks, uh, there was a publisher that was looking at Blue Scar. And the person that was in their marketing department was a really big supporter and was like, this is going to be a perfect fit. And I tried not to get my hopes up, but I did. And um, <laughs> I remember I, you know, I got the email and said, no, we're not, we're not going to pick this up. And I thought, here we go again. But when I shared that news with the Patreon, uh, 
with the page, so many people were like, don't worry about it. You know, no, no matter what, we're going to support you. And that just means that somebody else is supposed to get it or you're supposed to do it yourself. And I'm like, man, you guys are awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's the nice thing. They're there because they want to they want to support you. They want to they want to be there for you. It, it's nice to have a bit of a cheering crowd behind you. It's it's wonderful. Absolutely. Well, Hell, thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much again, Jamie. It has been absolutely a pleasure to meet you and to hear all the stories. And I wish your dog all the best as well. Thank um, you. I hope everything goes well with her. Thank you so much, Jamie. Thank it's been you. awesome to meet you, Jamie. Nice Bye. meeting you. Bye. Bye-bye.